Alrighty, what's going on guys? This is Nelson Rios, aka Mugen Katsuki, and I'm gonna show you something today that I learned by Atoro, aka NYC Furby, about these rumored optimal timings that you guys keep uh, fronting on and not believing in. So today we're gonna demonstrate on using Ultra Street Fighter 4 on the PC and remind you this is only meant for PC it's not meant for consoles as of yet obviously because we can't edit any of the files and whatever that we're going to be uh, looking at and pertaining to okay right, so we're going to use this folder right here which is basically a um, a mouse pulling rate for the USB so anything connected by USB you can change the Hertz of the actual input and speed of said device so we're gonna open into it all right let me zoom in we're gonna go into driver we're gonna go into setup all right and as you can see here we have just a regular thing see usb devices rate setup you're gonna click on where it says mice and you're gonna hit all and then you're gonna have all the devices here that has like either default rate or it'll have like a thousand and so on and so forth. So you're gonna basically put a you know a filter on the device, and when you see this warning issue right here, is basically saying that you know Windows cannot verify the digital signature for this file, blah 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 blah. So more or less you have to basically shut it off and you know be able to like take out this window so you can process along. So you're just gonna X out when hit no. And the way to fix that is by holding shift and, um, you know, basically holding shift and go to the start menu and then hit restart. And that's how, like, you'll bring up, like, a certain menu, which then you need to go to the advanced options, you know, system startup. And then you restart the computer and then you'll hit the number seven key, which basically disables the window for said program, so on and so forth. But all in all, once you get like everything you know out of the way and done with that you go back to all you're basically going to enable this device when it allows you to obviously it's not going to right now and then you will click on where it says default oops and then you see you have the options here for 31 32 125 250 500 and 1000 hertz you're going to set it to 1000 hertz and then this device, whatever you have highlighted, will be at a thousand hertz. Now, the whole point of this is so that it pulls the rate at the fastest speed that it can do instead of having the inherited input latency on, let's say, like a controller or a fight pad or even an arcade stick. So that would help you within that aspect to get to like the quickest way to low latency on like your controller or pad setup. Okay, so now the next thing that we're going to look at and look into is basically making sure that your graphics card is, you know, enabled with certain things. So we're going to go on the graphics card. I have a NVIDIA. Okay. All right, this is too big right now. All right, so now you're going to go to where it says manage 3D settings. All right, and then as you see here, you have a bunch of options. The ones that we're mainly going to focus on at the moment today, if you have updated your graphics card, it'll have something that says low latency mode. I have mine to ultra, which basically will be able to be like the lowest latency possible for the game or even my monitor itself. And then the next thing that we want to make sure that we have off is a V-Sync or vertical sync. You're going to want to have this off because then that will start causing a screen tearing and that's not something that you want to happen. So make sure that's off and then you, you know, you apply those settings and you're good on the, that department for your, uh, your graphics card. Now, next thing that you also want to make sure of, I'm going to show you, you're going to go to where it says display settings. And then I got to make sure I find the right monitor. So I'm going to click on one because that is my monitor that I want to show you guys. And as you can see here, it shows you your display information. I have it to 256 by 1440, 
but my refresh rate is what we're focusing on. So the refresh rate or in Hertz is basically how much uh, frames that the lines will be drawn within your monitor so it can be refreshed faster. So it will be better for you, of course, when you're having your input latency and whatnot. So mine's is at 144 Hertz, which is capped for the maximum that I can push for this monitor. And I have it set there. Of course, obviously, I have the options to do 59, 74, 120, or 144. 144 being the best, so it has a smoother motion, so on and so forth. So once you have that refresh rate set up and good to go, now the last thing that you're going to want to do is edit um, a certain file, which is basically called an INI file for said computer game and whatnot so for today we're going to concentrate on doing it for ultra street fighter 4. so mainly what you want to do is you're going to go into where it says documents you're going to have a capcom folder here it'll say super street fighter 4 but it's the same thing and then you'll have three files here what you're going to want to edit and touch is the config ini files so I'm going to take it off of read only and I'll explain the reason why I have it on read only in a second here. All right, so you're going to double click it and you're going to have it open. Within the INI file, you want to make sure that your resolution is capped to wherever you want it. So I have the game set to, you know, 1080p. And the refresh rate is also important. So I have it instead of uh, 60 hertz, which is the max that the game is capable of doing, I have it at 144 hertz. All right, and then also the other thing is, despite it saying it here for the frame rate, it's not supposed to be fixed, it's supposed to be on variable. Variable basically allows you to have a more smoother experience depending if you have a higher refresh rate monitor, which technically I do. So that's the reason why this will have to change from fixed or smooth to whatever you had it on previously, and you have to set it to variable in order for it to you know work correctly for 144 hertz once you have these settings and everything applied uh, what you're going to do is basically you know you can hit x out or you can hit save you go to properties and make sure it's on read only reason being is so that no one can go in and mess up the file later on you know prior to what you had made the changes for and then as well when you boot up the game now which i'll do here Just give it a second. All right, there we go. Boot up the game here. On the right hand side, it's only going to show uh, 60 hertz, sadly, at the moment. Z60 frames. That's the highest that the game is capable of going, so it's not going to be any higher within the, the Steam thing. Whatnot. And then again, you go to options. You're going to want to go to graphic settings. And again, this is what I have. Right now it's on fixed, it shouldn't be on fixed, what it should be on is variable. So once you have it on variable, then you're good to go. Everything else can stay on the way how I have it, so on and so forth. Alright, so then you will just back out and like you're good to go. There will be no screen tearing, no drop input latency, so on and so forth. So this is the uh, I guess you could say the optimal way to play Ultra Street Fighter 4 on PC. If you guys wanted to be able to have one, the best possible um, input latency from your, your controller, pad, or arcade stick to the computer within the game, and also optimizing your graphics card and your monitor so everything is at either low latency, decent being off, and to have a very high refresh rate be compatible to the game that you're corresponding to. And once you have all these settings, you're good to go to play Ultra Street Fighter 4 at 144 hertz. This shit is crazy. We had a tournament yesterday as a test run, and it was phenomenal. Everyone enjoyed it. No one really complained. And yeah. Also, what I would like to make mention of real quickly before I end this video is that you also want to make sure whatever you're doing like if you're running a tournament 
on multiple PCs and so on and so forth. You don't want to have to keep using the program that I had brought up before for the, um, you know, for the USB um, pulling rate. Because every time when you unplug it, then it might not save the, the prior settings for it to stay at a thousand hertz. So what I would recommend is that if you get, um, like, let's say the Wingman, the Wingman, I think it's like the Xbox version. Let me see. Yeah, so if you get the Wingman Brooks converter and whatnot, you don't have to get it on eBay, but if you get this, it will be easier. And the reason why I say that for your setups is because when you plug this in and you have two of them within the computer itself, you can basically optimize the Brooks adapter with the polling rate so that can be always at a thousand hertz so only thing that you're technically doing is pulling out the usb for your controller or your arcade stick and it could be like an instant plug and play swap so you're always plugged in at the lowest latency possible no matter what because it's going to convert whatever you're plugging in into an x input aka either 360 or xbox one uh pad or controller so that that's also like you know a step up in order for you guys to have like the best possible experience and that's really pretty much it you know leave a comment like subscribe to the video definitely shout outs to NYC Furby and definitely shout outs to Arcade Brooklyn for allowing us to have the event and also basically use it as a test purpose to see how people would like and enjoy the optimized version of Ultra Street Fighter 4 if anything, you guys can also follow me on Twitch, which is the same thing, Mugen underscore Katsuki, and also all my social media. Alright guys, thank you for watching, and hopefully this was a helpful video.